Batman doesn't operate in the day. And so we are here. So one day before the Batman, and hopefully the next time you see me, I will be hopefully here to give my review on Pattinson Man. I'm, I'm, I'm in the Batman, but it's Dark Knight Rises. This is our final film that I'll be re 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 reviewing that has helped build us through to this Batman film. Hopefully you've enjoyed all of the reviews. Whew, where do I start with the Dark Knight Rises? Um, hmm. The Dark Knight Rises. The Dark Knight Rises and Batman Robin, they are linked in a way. Because for me, this is just for me, for me, just personally for, for me, just for me. This is not objective, personally for me. Because, you know, film can be objective, just personally for me. The Dark Knight Rises is the worst Batman film. That's just for me on a personal level. Um, because, you see, Batman and Robin, if you view it as a comedy, it's a comedy. It's a slapstick comedy. So... It's achieved what it wanted to do. We are a slapstick, colourful, balls of the wall, crazy comedy. And whatever you say about Batman and Robin, you take something away. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Because he was hilarious in that thing. And yeah, I just say, for me, there's nothing I take away from Batman and Rise. There's nothing. So, we're well, see. The very first issue with Batman Rise is the tie title. He said, told you. <laughs> You know, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very key with this whole thing, man. I'm, you know, so for me, I don't call myself like a geek or a nerd because I don't give myself a label because I like cool stuff. So don't label me on like, oh, you're a geek. I just like cool stuff, and Batman is cool. So I was into the research. This film was supposed to be called Shadow of the Bat. So the first film, Batman Begins. Second film, The, the Dark Knight. Third film, Shadow of the Bat. So all of the films having different titles. But it was called The Dark Knights. It was changed to Dark Knights because The Dark Knights was so popular. Warner Brothers were like, bro, we have to have Dark Knights in the, in the, in the title. We just have to. Because that name right now is synonymous with such a popular, critically acclaimed comic book film. So obviously I was like, this is obviously trying to take the fumes from The Dark Knights rather than to be a film in and of itself. Because I feel, even if I wasn't a fan of The, of the Dark Knights, I liked how Batman Begins was one thing. Dark Knights was one thing. And you expect that Shadow of the Bats would be a completely different thing, you know. So you had three films, but looking at the Batman character and the Batman world in very different ways and very different lenses. Maybe Shadow of the Bats would have been much more of like a horror kind of film, you know, who knows. So really, that was already a red flag then. Another red, red flag was, you see, it's, it's called the Wolverine Complex. Bane is bigger than Batman. Because there is a reason why the artists drew Bane like that. And the reason why when Bane breaks Batman's back, it's an iconic image based on just how gargantuan Bane is compared to Batman. Tom Hardy is an extremely good actor. Go watch Bronson. Go watch Locke. You know, the guy is a very, very good actor. So yeah, for me, choosing Tom Hardy, not about the actor, he has to be big. Same thing. Hugh Jackman is a, is a, is a quality actor. Hugh Jackman is an awesome actor. Prisoners. Freaking um, prestige. He's a damn good, good actor. But he does it. He isn't Wolverine. Sorry, that was a red flag, but fair enough. Baines. Sorry. Tim Hardy did a very good job. And I don't fault Tim Hardy for what he did because he created a very interesting character with an interesting voice and a very interesting approach. So, I, because he took a huge swing. I'm like, I'm going to come here. Because remember, he was coming off of what Heath Ledger did, did. So he had to come with something interesting. I don't fault Tom Tom Hardy. I fault the sound mixing. <laughs> I wouldn't hear what this dude was saying at the start. And there's times where I don't know what this dude is saying. So I don't know what's wrong with Nolan and sound mixing. I couldn't hear what this guy was, was freaking saying. And ultimately, I think at the end, Bane started, was, 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 was crying. I mean, there's so much stuff wrong with this film. <laughs> But the most egregious part of this film is the story of Batman. Which is why it's that for me, this is the worst Batman film. 
and it's a film, and it's and, and I think it is the one, it is the one Batman film that I like. I've only seen Dark Knight Rises once, and that was in the cinema. <laughs> I've never seen this film like, from beginning to end. I've never seen this film from beginning to end. I mean, I've, I watched maybe like the, the Bane fights and some Bane scenes because Tom Hardy was the best thing about the film. Um, but I've never watched the film. I've only watched it once and that was in the cinema and that's it. Um, this is egregious because it doesn't make any logical sense. Why would you want to retire? You see, you, you take the example of Batman here, because the crux of the story is Batman ultimately trying to retire, trying to get, and he ultimately does re retire, which is what makes this film stupid. And what I say to that is that, what was the point of the Dark Knight's Returns? The point of the Dark Knight's Returns, which is what Frank Miller was trying to say is, he can't quit. He has to do this, <laughs> you know. And the reason why we see him there is, you know, in Dark Knight Returns, he in the comic, Dark Knight Returns, I think it's maybe 60 or, or, or 70. So he may have had to retire because he's too old. And the whole point of what makes that star story interesting is he shouldn't be doing, he shouldn't be Batman at 70 years old. But he has to because the city needs him and the city is, has gotten even worse. And that shows that despite everything he does, the city still gets bad. The whole point of that opening scene in Batman Returns is he has to be Batman. He is, <laughs> put intended, Batman forever, <laughs> you know? Um, the end of Batman Mask of the Phantom Phantasm. He has to be Batman. So, him retiring, you're like, wait a minute, so, you think Gotham is not going to be nice and sweet and lovely, and if you give it to Gordon Levitt's character, no, crime. What police officer is a police officer for two, two years or three years? <laughs> you're a police officer until you physically can't do it anymore because crime never stops. <laughs> so that's what I want you put on that color of Batman. You are Batman until you're not physically able to do it <laughs> anymore. You know. But the beauty about Dan Returns was that even though he was not physically able, hence why he had to retire because he, he was too old, he was like, I've got to get back here because my life is worthless without this. Because that thrill of being Batman is something I miss and something that I do need, which is what makes the character so interesting is that he enjoys being Batman because his life is crap without it. But what none of us tell us is that no, his life without being Batman is better because he can stay with Selena Kyle and chill out in rich restaurants. Catwoman was a complete miss. And Hathaway isn't the worst actress in the world, but it was a complete miss. It was a complete miss and it just didn't work, especially when you're coming off the heels of Michelle Pfeiffer's iconic performance and half the way as Carbon, it was just no, it was just a total miss. <laughs> I mean, that's the, that's the best, it was a total miss. Marion Cotillard is a very good actress. I believe she was Oscar nominated, she's a very good actress. And this just shows that you can be the best actor in the world, but if you're directed badly and you're giving trash lines, there's only so much you can do. Please go onto YouTube and look at Talia Al Ghul's death scene. Of rises. Probably the, one of the worst death scenes in cinema history. <laughs> one of the worst. Um, Gary Oldman, again, he, too melodramatic, too overdramatic. It, again, it's, he did the best he could because Gary Oldman is such an amazing actor for me. I say he's the greatest actor of all time. But there's only so much he could do in the way that he was directed. Um, so, and, I, and for me, I just think that a director rises is that you have to only, this is what you have to, guys have to understand. The film ends with Batman dragging a bomb that looks like something out of Looney Tunes. Remember like Acme? In Looney Tunes, those bombs that was like those big black things. He drags that and he nukes himself. You nuked it, bro. When we watched it in the cinema, the whole screen was white. Because <laughs> he nuked himself, but he survived the nuke. Oh, because of the um, emergency thing. I'm sorry, I don't know what, I don't care how good your emergency thing, no one escapes that nuke that, 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 that we saw. So, a film was just incredibly stupid. I mean, and, and here's the thing, this is, this, and this, I think, again, doing the, the research, this came out before, I was this, I need to, no, this was 2012, also, I was, I was an extra in this film, you, you could see me in the trailer, but not the full thing. Um, I think, now, I may be wrong. This came out after. 
I because I think Inception came out in 2010 and this came out in 2012. I believe that's what I believe Inception came out be, before this. Yes, I think Inception was 2010. And I think what it what wanted was that look, here's the deal. Because I don't think Nona wanted to come back, especially with the death of his legend and everything. But when I said, We'll give you Inception, we'll support it fully for Inception, you've got to come up for rice. We'll, whatever you need, however much money you need, we'll give you, we'll support you fully. 300, 200 mil, you can take a train through the city, and, and all we ask is you come back and do a part three. So I do feel that Dark and Rise was just sort of like, okay, a solid for thingy, because I just, because you could tell that in in the the, the third film, the Joker would have come, come back, 100%. Well, like, 1,000%, based on just how popular was, he would have come back. But even though he didn't have Joker, you, you can, st that's what being creative is. You can still create a story because you could say, okay, that Joker story has ended. Let's now bring an, a much more interesting character. Or you could circle back to the League of Shadows and so forth and now make this whole thing come around full circle. So, um, but for me, Rises for me was just, I just, I didn't, it was just a mess. It was, it, was, it was a mess. I mean, the story was a mess. I liked what Tom Hardy was trying to do, but his character was a mess, and his character ended up crying. <laughs> and wouldn't cry. Also, sorry. Now, this... Two scenes. One scene is Batman Ray, Ray retiring. Dumb. Second biggest scene. Batman doesn't operate in the day. And people say, oh, bro, oh, so if um, criminals fight in the day, then, then Batman can't do anything. This is fiction. We are suspending our, our imagination. And the whole point of this piece of fiction known as Batman is he's a creature of the night. And Gotham is a nighttime city because it works for the visual of the character. The character looks stupid in the day. <laughs> and when you saw Batman fight Bane in snow, it looked stupid, you know? There's a reason why in the comics, how many times in the comics do you see Batman fighting in a snow in clear daylight? Because visually, it doesn't work. From a visual artistic point of view, because it's a bat, it's Batman, he's a creature of the night, he walks, everything artistically is done of him fighting and operating at night. So that for me was like, because I think Nolan was like, well, I'm Nolan, I did Dark Knight, so I'm going to do something different, I'm going to put Batman out in the day. Fair enough. The fighting was so trash and also so that because that's my thing here is that people people put up say that Batman Robin was the worst Batman film, it, it was it's horrible and everything. But and again, I may be alone in this. I might be alone in this because for me, at the end of the day, Batman Robin, Batman is still bad Batman. <laughs> he is he is still Batman in that thing. And it was what it was. See, Dark Knight's Rises, you're trying to be serious, but it looks stupid. <laughs> So you're failing, in, in my view, for what you're trying to achieve because you're trying to be a serious film, some of the things, but it sounds like being stupid and illogical. Like, why is Batman retiring? What makes you think that this city is not going to now be safer with you re retiring? <laughs> no, you have to still operate because of the tech you have, the ability you have to, to fight crime, unlike any other police officer. So because you've now gone, God, it will be fine, it will be cool, it will, it will be free of all. No, that's not how it works. Um... So yeah, that's completely, completely stupid, man. Um, and yeah, man, and, and I, 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 like, I remember leaving the cinema of Rise and Stars. I've never felt more embarrassed sitting in cinema, just as a huge Batman fan and so forth. I've never felt more embarrassed watching a film because I was like, this, it was like if everything good about this Batman character were just ripped away and just shattered by Nola. So, that's what it is, man. And as we're now seeing in a new Batman comic, because look, I told you, I, I, I ignore the whole Ben Affleck Batman. Thing. Look, relax. So my just hope is that we can get back to a character who operates at night, who is dedicated to his craft, and who understands that the burden you have is you are Batman forever.